YouTube, good morning, welcome back to the channel, Craig Cloud IT Pro. Yes, that is Thanos' glove behind me. In today's video, I'm going to talk about data enrichment. So grab your coffee, grab your whiskey, because you know this one's going to get pretty damn juicy. Also, if you can, please drop a comment and a like down below. Help support the channel and support your boy. See you in there. Welcome, everybody. And... In today's video, I want to talk about data enrichment, enhancing your security capabilities. Uh, let me move that off the screen. That's my five-day meal plan. Uh, feel free to take a uh, quick screenshot of that. Uh, apologies. Um, <laughs> let's just dive straight in. Okay, so I want to talk about data enrichment and why it's super important to have this in your security operations plan. So data enrichment is like having added layers of extra armor for your cybersecurity efforts. So imagine you're guarding a fortress and you not only know who's approaching, but you also know their intentions and the potential weapons that they're carrying. So that's what kind of data enrichment does for you from a cybersecurity perspective. It beefs up your data with valuable context, making it easier to spot and defend against threats. In simple terms, it's a supercharger for your digital defenses, helping you stay ahead of cyber attackers and keeping your digital kingdom safe. So data enrichment really dramatically improves your threat detection. Contextualized business and threat knowledge may be utilized to strengthen detection analytics and increase sense of security posture. So the added context offered by enrichment in threat hunting and incident response allows for swift action. So you may get additional information during like a threat intelligence feed, which may reveal an email attachment that has a file name, which is known to be harmful. Harmful. So enrichment is really putting together data from several sources to give a richer stream of information to enhance occurrences that happen. And using that information makes the context absolutely critical in each of these instances filtering out the noise and selecting the high risk threats. Now, typical contextual information used for security data normally includes a whole bunch of different things. So you have identity context. So this would be Azure AD, uh, Entra as it is now, um, any ERP systems or CRM systems, they'd have asset information such as like a configuration management database, um, asset privileges such as AD group memberships, domain admins, schema admins, etc. Non-technical feeds, you know, such as background checks, um, badge data, fingerprint scanners. And then you have vulnerability contexts, you know, reports, missing patches, zero days. Network maps and geographical locations, such as internal network classification and border analytics. So a contemporary seam must now be able to enhance raw security events with pertinent information due to the exponential growth in events and warnings from a whole array of different products and technologies. However, when dealing with a massive amount of data, traditional seams face scalability difficulties. But, you know, if you've got Microsoft Sentinel, you've got nothing to worry about. Then we look at event and risk aggregation. So real-time enrichment can be used to support a number of important enterprise security use cases. So when Sentinel enriches the security data, the platform will also correlate it to the entity, such as a user, host, or IP address. This enables event aggregation and the ability to search enriched events across data sources by pivoting on any of the entities. So Sentinel can also calculate a user's rank, which is based on the user's Azure AD security group membership or mailing list, etc. And this stores the peer's rank from 1 to 20 in the user peer analytics table, which is part of another feature within Sentinel called the user and entity behavioral analytics. Similarly, IP addresses and vulnerability context and threat intelligence are all examples of momentary data or point in time data. So many organizations seek for ways to enrich their data when they migrate to Sentinel as a primary seam solution. 
So associating Office 365 data or Azure Activity logs, for instance, with an organization unit is deriving them from Azure AD. So this information can be filtered depending on organizational units thanks to enrichment. So you can import data from Azure AD, uh, including like a user's subsidiary associations as an extension property. Then after using like uh, a join query, you can enhance the event data and then use enrichment data to divide the events into different subsidiary groups. So the user context of a raw event log is enhanced using information from user directories like AD. So contextual data must be used in analytics and is searchable for threat hunting, which drastically cuts down on the amount of time it takes to conduct an inquiry because we've already enriched and normalized the data. And then we have threat intelligence integration with Sentinel. So Microsoft gives you a few ways that you can ingest or, you know, enhance your security experience using different types of threat intelligence. So you can use many of the one of threat intelligence platforms on the product. You can connect taxi servers, directly feed into Microsoft Defender for threat intelligence. You can also connect threat intelligence sources from playbooks. So this will allow you to enrich incidents with threat intelligence information that can help you directly investigate and use as a response action. So furthermore, threat intel would be, as I mentioned, you know, leveraging playbooks. So you can leverage st stuff from recorded future security intelligence, reversing labs, risk IQ, virus total. You know, there's some really juicy stuff out there, which I highly recommend you go look. The community is great for Microsoft Sentinel. So please have a butchers at that. Um, but building this contextual information can be used in our entity behavior analytics and updating watch lists as well. So for those that want to expand their data enrichment even further, you can tie this into data enrichment protocol, registration, data, and access protocol, RDAP, not RDP. So RDAP is, is a REST API uh, with the same information as the traditional who is service, except the data is returned in a standardized JSON format and this makes it super easy to pass the data, although it still remains a problem finding the correct RDAP server to begin with, you know, but you can deal with that. But it makes it super easy in passing the data and normalizing that and automating that process. So you could build, I don't know, a watch list with a known APT threat actor from uh, Russia or China, for example, and you could correlate the RDAP protocols based on the IP enrichment. And IP enrichment is super important because security events can be linked to a user, a host, or an IP address, or multiple other identities. And IP host mapping for advanced uh, visibility really gives you that detailed orientation of where a user logs in and what a user is doing. And this is all achievable within UABA, within Sentinel. Uh, and this maintains a user IP host relationship table to enable the enrichment of aggregation of events irrespective of how they were initiated. So you could search for like individual IP addresses using the entity search experience inside Sentinel, which is freaking awesome, by the way. Um, and Sentinel provides you a list of IP to host mappings on each entity page. So this includes like the first and last seen information and enables you to infer whether the IP address was assigned to which machine. And this is great for IP to host mappings that are currently generated in Sentinel. And this is this is huge. This is great to really get a hold of, you know, where your users are, where they're logging in. Maybe they're a road warrior and they're out on the road. Their IP address will obviously change every time they have internet access. And obviously integrating business relevant contextual information, such as like organization hierarchy, user office locations, uh, email addresses, watch lists, etc. Sorry, not watch list. They can be built into a watch list. I'll jump at the gun there. Um, for example, you can import user uh, with privileged access or terminated employees into a watch list. And then use that watch list to create allow and block list to detect or prevent those users from logging into the network. 
And then with this information, you can use Watchlist to enrich your event data with name dash value combinations derived from external data sources. And this really drives that, you know, evaluation and the ability to reduce risk within organizations based on individual entities. And then, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, I need some water. Uh, in fact, I'm just going to have a quick sip of this tea. One second. I probably won't edit that out because I'm lazy. So I've touched on entities a few times in this section, but I want to shed some knowledge on entity data classification, as this can really enhance the enrichment features within Sentinel. So Sentinel includes data elements that can identify and categorize entities when they are provided or created by Sentinel. So Microsoft Sentinel can compare insights given about a data item across a full range of data sources. And then they can easily track and refer to that item throughout the entire Sentinel experience. So when it knows what kind of entity a data item represents, if it's a user, a host, a file, a process, IP, whatever, numerous entity identities can be supported within Sentinel. And then each type contain a distinctive characteristic, which can be used to identify specific objects. And these characteristics are known as identifiers. And they have different fields which are expressed within the entity. So if we look at entity, there's multiple types of entities out there. There's endpoint stuff, there's network stuff, there's whatever this one is, identity stuff. <laughs> I'm saying that like I don't know, I'm prepared. Uh, and there's compliance stuff. And these are all across, you know, user accounts, IP hosts, malware, file processes, Azure resources, a domain name. But the key point here is, I love that transition, enrich data. Enrich data where you can. The more enrichment, the better the detections and the more robust and response times are lowered. Leverage playbooks for threat detection. Enrichment playbooks are extremely helpful to just go grab information from a source. So use playbooks to your advantage. Watch list to your friend. Honestly, the amount of customers I've seen not leveraging watch list is crazy. And this is a simple feature. Uh, and this has so much to offer and help you correlate data from distant sources within your environment. And classify and map entities. So classify your data using entity types. Each entity type has its own unique attribute. So including some of that information can be used to identify a particular entity. Thanks for watching the video. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you don't, well, that's just fine. Please subscribe, tell your friends, tell your family, tell your nan. Cheers.